I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12, and let's focus on verse 1. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David. Now, if you recall yesterday's chapter, 2 Samuel 11, David was in control. David was the prime mover. He got things done. David totally dominated the action from the palace roof all the way up until he crashed into the unyielding wall of God's righteousness. David, the leader, is about to learn that even kings must bow to the king of kings. As expected, God and his word dominate today's chapter. We expect judgment on David, and we see that here. But we find something that we were not expecting. Just as we're inclined to change the channel because David's game is over, God moves beyond his judgment and into the territory of grace and mercy. Grace, you know, is God's way of giving us something for nothing, something that we don't deserve. When we don't deserve anything, he gives us something. God's mercy is set into motion when we don't get something for something. That is, we don't get the punishment that we deserve, at least to the extent that we deserved it. Without the words, quote, the Lord sent Nathan to David, unquote, David's story could end up as bleak and as hopeless as Saul's. So the first line of the chapter, chapter 12, dispels any notion that the Lord is an uncaring onlooker, a blind judge who never hears cases and only judges according to our deeds the moment we do them. The Hebrew verb that translates as sent is salah, and it acts as a signal. It occurs 12 times back in chapter 11, where everyone is sending. David sends, Bathsheba sends, Joab sends, and now God sends. The Lord has gone into action, and He has sent Nathan to David. Is the Lord calling you to be a Nathan for a brother or a sister who is in sin? We have to be willing to risk offending even the king in order to deliver God's word. Otherwise, we offend the king of kings who sends us as his messengers. That's right. God is wanting to send you, but are you willing to go? Let's fight the urge to run ahead of the story. We should pause and meditate on those opening words because they speak of the vigilance of grace. God is ever looking. They show us that grace pursues a sinner and exposes his sin. They teach us that the Lord will not allow his servants to remain comfortable in sin, but he will ruthlessly expose our sin lest we settle down and learn to rely on it. So just because the Lord allows you to succeed in unfaithfulness does not mean that He won't come after you later. There is immense comfort for every believer in these first six words of the chapter. Not that God's grace will expose our sin, not that it's enjoyable, but that what would happen if His grace and mercy did not pursue us? What if God just abandoned us when we were successful at sin? Romans 5 verse 8, But God proves His own love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Messiah died for us. But we must respond to Him in humble repentance if we are to expect His mercy. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the Bible teaching of Groundworks Ministries and you would like to help us reach this generation with the gospel, would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? Donating is secure and it is easy at our website and we really need your help. There are things that we could be doing that we can't because we simply lack the resources. So check us out at groundworksministries.com.